Thanks for joining us, guys. Um, all right, so I think we might as well get started here. So um, today we are going to learn how to make s'mores and banana boats in our kitchens. Um, so, you know, in this time of social distancing, we can't always just go out and camp like we would maybe want to this time of year. Um, I know some of you probably have a fire pit in your backyard, or maybe you have a barbecue or a fireplace um, in your home. So those are ways that you can make snacks over the fire, but um, we don't have any of those things here. So we are just learning um, how to make them in our home so we can still have that experience and kind of make us feel like we're, um, we're out at camp. Um, so I highly recommend if you haven't done it, um, do a little camp in, um, in your living room one night, maybe pitch your tent in your living room, um, or make a fort, and then you can make some of these fun camp snacks that we're going to learn today. All right, so to make s'mores, um, we're going to do that in the kitchen here. Um, but one thing that I learned that I just, um, was really excited to share with you today is that I found out recently that Girl Scouts actually are credited with inventing the s'more. Um, they were first published in a recipe um, in a Girl Scout handbook back in 1927. So they were probably around before then, but Girl Scouts are actually credited um, with being the first to publish that recipe. So um, this is literally a Girl Scout tradition that has been uh, going on for almost a hundred years now, if not uh, potentially even longer. So um, definitely a great snack to make in your kitchen. Um, so what we're going to do is um, we are going to I actually made these ahead because I was a little afraid of using the broiler function on my oven um, on live TV, So, but I'm going to explain how I did it. Um, so basically you just need as many marshmallows as you want. So we're just two people here, so we didn't need a lot of marshmallows, um, especially not at 10 o'clock in the morning. So um, we just put four on there. So we have a baking sheet um, with a little parchment paper. I like to line my baking sheets just because um, then it doesn't get as sticky and it's a little easier to clean, but you don't necessarily need that. Um, so one thing I found out too, I was doing a little research on s'mores um, to prepare for this. And so what really makes a s'more a s'more? Um, and what I found out is that really you don't need the graham crackers and the chocolate, which is what you would typically put around the marshmallow for a s'more. Um, really the only thing that you actually need is the toasted marshmallow. And then you can get creative um, with different ways to, um, to make s'mores, different toppings, different things to kind of sandwich them in. And I actually didn't have graham crackers or chocolate, so I'm gonna show you a way to make it really fun and creative. Um, but first I'll tell you how to actually make these in the oven. So um, this actually uses the broiler function, which I've never used before until this morning. Um, and now I'm a huge fan of it. I'm really excited to try to broil more things. Um, so on an oven, you have a bake function and a broil function. With baking, you um, are using more of like a radiant heat um, and it takes a little longer, but broiling actually exposes um, the food that you're baking to direct heat um, through a flame. So um, I put this on here, I'll open it up. Um, I used the top rack of my oven here and I just kind of slid them in there, um, turned on the broiler, and this actually only took like three minutes um, to get nice and toasty. Um, and that one right over here looks just absolutely perfect. These ones um, are a little light for my taste. Um, but how many of you guys prefer um, like a lighter toasted marshmallow or do you guys like the ones that are like burnt? like? almost like on fire s'mores. Like, I feel like there's definitely um, some people who like them charred and some people who like them perfectly toasted. I know when I'm out by the campfire, I'm always trying to get the perfect toast. And I actually got, I feel like the closest I've ever gotten here. So maybe in the oven it's a little more controlled, but honestly, there is something just about being out by the campfire that you just can't replace that. But we're getting as close as we can here in the kitchen. So. Once we are done with that, so you really want to keep an eye on it because you don't want these to burn. Using the broiler function um, is something that you want to be really safe about doing. So um, I was keeping an eye on it the whole time. I had the light on in my oven, um, took them out, um, and I actually flipped them over and then put them back in for maybe another minute um, to get them nice and, and toasty on both sides. Um, and 
then, so now that they're ready, we can actually um, make the sandwich part of the s'more. And before I tell you guys what I did, um, tell me what you guys have used. I know there's tons of different alternatives to graham crackers and chocolate out there. So what do you guys use um, for s'mores? I'll take a little minute here to um, to go to get some of those comments. Yeah, in. we're getting some responses All on right. how people like their marshmallows. Oh, tell me. It seems to be about 50 50. Okay. I think maybe the toasted ones are a little bit better though. Okay, yeah. I, I like it nice and toasty, but like, I mean, I'll still eat it if it's like a little burnt. I'll still eat it. Why not? Um, all right. Any more comments coming in about um, the different. Mm. Some people are just saying that you're making them hungry. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> nice little treat for 10 a.m. on a Monday. It's a really good way to start your week out. So <laughs> I feel pretty lucky here. <laughs> All right. Well, while we're waiting for those to come in, I know there's usually a lag um, from when you guys comment to when I can see it. Um, I'll just tell you guys what I'm doing here. So I had an extra box of Tagalong Girl Scout cookies, um, and I've heard that peanut butter... Um, and chocolate with your s'mores is really good. I've never actually tried it before. Um, but that's what we're gonna do here. So we just, this is just what we had in our kitchen. I know that right now we're trying to avoid taking too many trips to the grocery store. Um, so we just use what we had. So if you don't have graham crackers, you might be able to use something different. Um, just like what we're doing. So I'm just gonna grab my little spatula and I'm gonna grab one marshmallow and put it on my tag along. So, all right. So get that nice and melty. Um, probably wanna eat it pretty quickly, but um, we're gonna move on. Um, I'm really curious to hear what people say they like um, in their s'mores, if we've got any comments from from the audience. Yeah, it seems like people agree that Reese's or uh, chocolate and peanut butter are, uh, are good. Chocolate and peanut butter are always really good. Good combo. Has anybody ever put fruit on their s'mores. Um, I've also heard of like just regular chocolate chip cookies. Um, so actually, um, when I studied abroad in New Zealand, um, they have this thing called Girl Guides there, which is really similar to Girl Scouts, um, but they call it Girl Guides there. And they sell their own type of cookies, but in New Zealand, cookies are called biscuits. Um, and they don't really do s'mores, but they do, um, well, I guess they're kind of s'mores, but they do um, the toasted marshmallows and the Girl Guide cookies. They're not quite as good as the Tagalongs. They're more of like a biscuit-y, like uh, more of like a shortbread cookie. I guess kind of like the tree foil. So, um, yeah. All right, so that's how you make your s'mores in the oven. Super easy, very quick. Um, just, you know, keep in mind to be careful about um, using that broiler function. Um, but the next one that we're going to do is banana boats. And banana boats are my absolute favorite camp snack. Um, and I'm excited to hear kind of what your take on banana boats are because I've heard so many different ways um, that you can fill them with fun things. Um, so drop in the comments if you have any um, fillings that go in your banana boats. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, so to make a banana boat, um, this is really similar to how we do it on the fire. So we just need a nice little sheet of tin foil, um, one banana still in the peel. We need a knife and some toppings. So um, I've heard of all kinds of crazy things that people put in their banana boats, but what I have are just some mini marshmallows, mini chocolate chips, and some peanut butter chips. Cause I love peanut butter and chocolate and banana. That's like one of my favorite flavor combinations. Um, and that's what we're gonna use today. So, um, to make this banana boat, we are just going to slice the banana down the middle, but we don't wanna cut it in half. Um, we just wanna make like a nice little opening um, to put our topping in. So if you wanna bring the camera a little closer. Sure. All right, so we are just gonna slice it. Just be really careful. You don't wanna um, get too deep in there. You don't wanna cut your fingers. Um, so we've got a nice little opening here. Um, and you guys, our cameraman here has actually never tried a banana boat in his life. My so first, I am really excited time. that he's going to get to share this with me. This is definitely a Girl Scout classic. <laughs> um, okay, so um, we've got our nice little banana open um, and ready for toppings. So I'm going to put in a few things. 
I'm hearing that ice cream is another uh, another topping you might oh, consider. Oh, wow. That sounds awesome. Um, I've never tried that, but I think I might have to now. We've got some uh, black raspberry chip ice cream. That could be interesting. It might be a little too decadent for 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, okay, so personally, I don't like a whole lot of toppings in here um, because if it gets too... Uh, too much stuff in there, then it like it just kind of overwhelms you, and I still want to taste the banana. So I just put a few of each of my topping. Um, is there any other fun toppings people have? Uh, it looks like sprinkles is another one. Oh, sprinkles! That's a good idea. Um, I posted this question on Facebook the other day, and someone said that they put granola in their banana boats, and mm. that one sounds kind of interesting, almost like a breakfast banana boat. That could be cool. So, we got our marshmallows in there. I like to line them up perfectly. I don't know. Just like a little <laughs> meticulous thing that I like to do. But this is our banana boat, and we're ready to bake it. So, I'll put our knife aside. And then we just are going to wrap it in the tin foil. Now you kind of got me thinking maybe Oreo crumbs. Ooh. That might be a good one. Yeah, that. Oreo sounds good. Mm -hmm. Um... Definitely. I've always wanted to try butterscotch chips in there. I don't know how that would be with bananas, oh, but yeah. that could be good. All right, so we're gonna get our banana nice and ready. Okay, so our banana is ready to go. <laughs> so now we just put it back in the oven. So I preheated the oven to 350. Um, and I've actually seen a bunch of different recipes out there, so I was looking up to try to find the, the right one. Um, some of them say to have the heat lower or higher, um, and I didn't test them out, but just based on my experience of how long banana boats take to cook over a fire, um, this one seemed to be the most accurate. So um, I put it at 350 degrees, um, and I'm just going to put it right in there. Um, and I'm just gonna put it in for about 10 to 12 minutes. Um, and if you need longer, then, you know, once you're done, you just, um, you take it out and make sure it's like gooey and all the chocolate's melted. Um, because the banana has that peel around it and the tin foil, it's, it does take a, a few minutes. So I would, I usually say about 10, 12 minutes is um, good under the fire. So we'll see, we're gonna test that out and see how good it is over the oven, but um, do we have any more um, suggestions for what to put in a banana boat? Oh, let's see. I'm seeing ice cream, ice cream sprinkles. That great. Yep. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we've got about 10 to 12 minutes before this is going to be ready, um, and that's really all that we have for you today. Um, so... Uh, I hope that you guys make some great camp snacks. Definitely have a camp in while we're uh, stuck at home. That's a great way to spend your time and still get that outdoor experience. But we do hope that you guys get to join us at Girl Scout Camp um, as soon as we're able to have those again. So, um, and if you're not a Girl Scout and you've been enjoying our videos, um, definitely go to girlscouts.org slash join so that you can learn more about how to become a member. Um, and then you can also join us again today at 2 o'clock for um, the part 2 of um, Girl Scout Songs with Mackenzie. Um, and if you didn't catch the last one, it's a real treat, so I hope you join us at 2. Um, otherwise, I hope you all have a great day, and thanks for watching. Peace out, Girl Scouts!